six and three, and we wanted to show you one of the dumb things that happens when the wrong person somehow gets a hold of a beautiful machine like this. To be clear, we don't mean us. One of the first things we noticed with the car when we first picked it up that something wasn't quite right with the rotors. However, it was too good of a deal to pass up regardless. Notice the Brembo Big Brake Kit with a stock rotor. And the closer we look, the worse it gets. Not only is this a stock rotor on a big brake caliper, it's also on the wrong side. If you've ever wondered why it matters which side the rotor goes on, this is a perfect example of why, and we can see it here. So when this rotor spins, it's scooping air, running it across a hot rotor, and then onto the bearings and heating the bearings up. It should be doing the opposite. What you want to be doing is flipped around, scooping that air and pushing out through the rotor to cool it. This is not working this way. The more obvious one is that a stock rotor is not going to utilize the entire brake pad in that caliper. That's the rotor that should be being run and that's the stock one. This one's a little less obvious, but if we look at the thickness of the Brembo versus the stock, we can see the thickness is significantly different. What that's going to do, it's going to force the piston and the caliper to go way beyond what it's meant to do. And so you're not going to have the clamping power that you should. Using this rotor, we can show you the importance of directionality of your rotors. Using this green wire, we showed you the vein. So on the inside, it scoops the air. And as the rotor continues to turn like a centrifugal pump, it throws the air out here. And that's why it's so important that you get the direction of your rotors properly. To continue on that thought, if anybody ever tells you that it's the holes in the drill rotor that dictate which way this rotor should be spinning, they're wrong. It's simply the veins. You'll notice on all the different cars, the holes go in all sorts of directions. So don't worry about that. So if you ever find yourself in our predicament and you have no idea what parts to buy because nothing matches and you don't have anything that's stock, we're gonna show you what to look for so you can figure it out. So we find our caliper bracket and we can see on the caliper bracket there's identification. What we can do is take these numbers, call Brembo International, and then we can find out what pads, what rotors, all the information we need for our kit, and we can get the parts we need. this nice Brembo kit, that's all you really need to do. The first step for installing your new Brembo Big Brake Kit is to install the caliper bracket. So you'll notice that the ears go in and we're gonna to torque these to 81 foot-pounds. Because the caliper bracket is aluminum mounted to steel, we use never seize on these bolts due to electrolysis. Torque to 81 foot-pounds. Also important to note, if this is the first time installing the big brake kit on your car, you'll need to trim the backing plate, and that way it has room for the caliper to be installed. Before installing your rotor, use brake parts cleaner to wipe the rotor down thoroughly. We found that the Brembo is actually very clean, but you should do it anyway. Question whether or not you're installing the right rotor on the right side, Brembo places a part number along the edge of the rotor that corresponds to the right or left. Place your rotor on the hub, and then the retaining bolts. You'll notice that some have a big shoulder while others have a smaller shoulder. These have a tendency to rust, so we also use never seize on these. If you 
want to be very specific, torque to 12 foot pounds. Next, slip your caliper on the rotor and mount those so. You have two mounting bolts here and down low. To note, we use never seize on these as well. Once again, torque to 81 foot pounds. Now for the fun part, we're going to show you just how easy it is to change pads on these Brembo's. First, pull out the pad retainer clip. There's two. Next, drive out the caliper pad pin to a certain point. Then hold on to the spring and remove all the way. Then remove the second pin on the bottom. Then the pads slip right out. Slip right out. If you have one that's stuck, you may need to compress the pistons a bit. We like to use a clamp on the top and bottom. Now your new pads can go in. Pick it up without touching the face. With that pad in, place the pin in to keep it from falling out while you put the other side in. Place the bottom pin in. Along with the retainer clip. Use a pin to keep the pad and the hole aligned. last touch to plug in your brake pad sensor. Now, when you order your pads, make sure that you get one that will accommodate that sensor. Otherwise, you'll have to delete it. With new rotors and pads installed, it's now time to bed the brakes. We're using Brembo's and they have their specific protocol. If your manufacturer has a different protocol, use it. For future reference, with your nice new big brake kit, do not use brake parts cleaner to clean the calipers. It'll ruin the finish and it'll look trashy. Use soap and water only.